Hey guys, Crushing Walrus here, and this is going to be a short tutorial on how to use manual engine controls in War Thunder. Seen a lot of questions come up in the past few days about uh, manual engine controls. People think, well, a lot of people think that you can only use them with uh, full real controls, because as you can see, there's no engine controls on mouse, on mouse aim or simplified controls. But I'm going to show you how. In one second, let me just reset this to defaults because I already have it set up. Alright, so this is just the default mouse aim setup. What you need to do, real short and simple, is just go to full, air, full aircraft controls, go to engine controls, and just assign a key, any key, that you're not using to be your engine controls mode. And then you can set up these buttons to do whatever you, to be whatever buttons you want. I already have my own little system here. I'll be back in a few seconds. Alright, I'm back. Um, I got everything set up the way I want it to be set up. And let's just use Mixture as an example. I'm going to show you exactly what I did. You can, use, you can see for increased value, I, I use my right arrow key. And for decrease, I used the left arrow key for my Mixture settings. And then I went down and set Relative Control. By default, it's set to No. You're going to want to set the T Yes. And I set my relative control sensitivity down to 60%. And this is just so that I can get more precise control over exactly what mixture setting I want. And uh, you're going to set up propeller pitch and uh, radiator in pretty much the same way. Just use whatever keys are, are convenient for you that you're not using elsewhere. And also you're going to want to toggle radiator button and a toggle propeller pitch button because you cannot customize your uh, propeller pitch without uh, first disabling the automatic propeller pitch and automatic radiator controls. Alright, and the next thing you're going to want to set up is the supercharger controls. I'll go more in depth into what the supercharger is and why it's necessary to have that set up later. Uh, you can see I have mine set to pause because I don't really have anything else set up on that button. My magneto controls I just set to what the flaps are usually assigned to. I just use F, so I don't really need these. And I, you don't really need prop feathering, but I set it up anyway to my slash key. And uh, you already have propeller pitch and radiator set up, so you should be good if you have all this good to go. And as I said, make sure you have uh, for propeller pitch, radiator, and mixture have the relative control set up, and or set to yes, and set it down to. Whatever's manageable for you, I put it to 60%, but just play around with it a little bit. And what you're going to do now is actually just go back to whatever control scheme you're on. For me, it's mouse aim. And your engine controls will save. So for me, when I press end on mouse aim, it'll still toggle my full aircraft controls for the engine control. Even though I don't have an engine control set up here, it just saves the engine control config and uh, just lets you use it in mouse aim. If you have it set up here, it will be set up here or here, whatever you're using. And uh, so I should be good to go. Let me just show this out for you a little bit. All right, so I'm in a test flight with the F4U Corsair. This is the 1D. I'm going to show you how exactly the engine controls work. You can see I'm playing around my radiator now and if you notice those cowling gills, that's what they are. They're designed to cool the aircraft if they're out. You can set it to whatever you want, 50%, 100%. 100% obviously cools the engine the fastest and 0% it'll make you the fastest but you won't get very much engine cooling. And uh, so that's the radiator. And the next setting is the mixture setting. And uh, this is something that's a little bit weird because most aircraft in real life just have like auto lean and auto rich mixture settings. And they don't have a percentage from 120 to 0 like in War Thunder. And this, this is just something that you'll have to play around with a little bit to find out which setting is appropriate for each aircraft. For a plane like the Corsair, for some reason, it, it seems to be 60% is about the right number that will get you the best uh, performance. But for certain planes like the P-47, they benefit from really high fuel mixture settings like 120 
That seems to be good for the P-47 at pretty much all altitudes. And uh, for a plane like the Yak-3, it benefits from a pretty lean fuel mixture, so I put it down to 40%. And uh, those are just some examples. You'll just, as I said, you'll just have to play around with it to find the appropriate settings for each plane. And uh, as I say, it's it's a little bit wonky. I don't think the engine controls are quite done in War Thunder yet. But uh, it's fun to play around with it a little bit. At least I think it is. And the prop pitch is the final setting that I'm going to tell you about. And I'm pressing my buttons to edit the prop pitch and it's not doing anything and that's because you need to press the toggle prop pitch button to disable the auto prop pitch and uh, usually you're gonna want to have this set around or even at 100 um, on occasion this can be problematic because uh, it'll over rev your engine if you keep it at 100% and go into a dive because your propeller will start spinning too fast you'll get too many RPMs and over rev the engine so for takeoff and diving you're going to want to have the prop pitch set a little bit lower than 100 because uh, you don't want to over rev the engine. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention always have the magneto set to either 2 or 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2 seems to always give you the best results so actually I'd just say always keep it on 1 plus 2. Alright now you can see my my IAS is dropping at an alarming rate and that's because I am at a much higher altitude now than I was before and the engine performance is dying out and I need to toggle my supercharger and I'm, that's what I'm going to do and you can see now the IAS went back up to 240 and is staying steady and when I take it off back to single stage the first stage the, uh, the IAS will start dropping again but I switch it back and I get that speed back now the last thing I'm going to show you is the prop feathering control and basically what you're going to want to use this for is once you've exceeded your maximum speed in level flight which for the Corsair I can tell you is around the sea level it's around about here like 580 your, your prop actually starts to act as a brake like a dive brake once you've exceeded your maximum speed and the prop feathering control will just make the prop stop creating as much drag and you'll actually gain speed faster in a dive once you're past your max speed alright that should be pretty much everything I think I covered just about everything regarding manual engine controls in War Thunder if you guys have any more specific questions feel free to ask me in the comments or private message me uh, I'll try to answer you the best of my ability. I know the basics of how a piston engine works, but honestly, I'm not the best person to ask on this subject. Uh, you're going to want to subscribe to someone like RamJB that knows a little bit more than me about this stuff and watch some of his videos. One more thing, if you guys have been wondering where my flat mile analyses went, I'm working on a number of them now. I have data for about four planes now. I just finished uh, recording or uh, getting all of my data for this plane actually, the Corsair F4E1D and 1C. Uh, last night, over uh, about two days, I finished testing this and I should be getting that video up in about two more days, hopefully. I've been a bit busy this week, but I should be able to get that video up sometime soon, hopefully. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you in my next one.